Hi Blender fans and welcome to Blender TC. In today's tutorial we're going to be making the Utah teapot. This teapot will be made just using one circle or maybe two and extrude and scale mainly. So join me in today's tutorial which is a tutorial on extrude and scale. Let's make the teapot. Let's begin. Hi Blender fans and welcome once again to Blender TC. And don't forget, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Let's begin. So first of all, we're going to load in our default cube. So we've got our default cube, just some quick keys. G and X along the red line. G and Y on the green. G and Z up and down. Tab key. Control Z will actually recenter everything. The tab key will take you in and out of edit mode. And if we actually select a face, we've got point select, line select, and face select. If we select a face, G and Z will move the face up. Control Z. And if you press the letter E, will extrude. E and S is what we're going to use mostly for this actual tutorial. So let's begin. So first of all, we don't need the shape we've just made, so X to delete and delete the shape. For this tutorial, we're going to be using a reference image. And the reference image we're going to be using is one I created. And I've put it on Pinterest, and the link should be in the description of this video. So just download it, and you can use it. First of all... And we'll hit the, the, you've got the one key, and we'll hit the one key, which means we're looking through front orthographic. And what we're going to do, if you're not in orthographic and you're in perspective, just pressing the one key puts you into orthographic. So we're looking from the front, and we're going to add an image, and the image we're going to add is our reference image. All right, let's have a look, and I've put this in the teapot, so let's have a look. There we are, zero teapot, and I'll get our reference image up. And there's our reference image. I'm just going to scale it up, recenter it, G key just to actually recenter it, just about there, G and Z, just to move it onto the red line ish. And this is our Utah teapot, which we're going to make. I'm just going to move it back along the Y line, looking from the front. So now what we need to do is actually create our Utah teapot. And like I said, we're going to do this with just a circle. So add in a circle. Add mesh circle. So with our circle selected, as you can see, that's in the base of our mesh. But we'll look back from the front. So we're just going to scale this. Up. Now I'm going to move it to the top, G Z, and we'll move that right to the top of our teapot, our teapot picture. Scale until it is the same size as the top of the teapot. And then we're going to edit mode by pressing the tab key. Take a drink of tea. It's early morning here in the UK, so extrude and see because I just want to extrude in the Z direction. As you can see, we're not extruding there, so that's because we're not on line select. So we were on face select there. You've got point select, line select, and face select. Point select is by pressing the one key you can get by pressing the one key for some reason I've got no keyboard so looks like the batteries have gone in my keyboard just wait for two minutes I had some big problems with batteries lately so another go I don't know if it's my keyboard it's in more power or something Let's see if we've got a no there we go. Right, and let's just set my keyboard back up. Right, start again. Right, so I'm looking from the front. Press the tab key to go into edit mode. And what I'm going to do is you've got point select, line select, and face select. For this, we need line select. Pressing the Alt key down and selecting in the line. And we'll just look through the front with this selected. So I'm going to E to extrude, S to scale, in fact, no, I'm not, Control Z, E to extrude, 
in the Z direction and just drag it down to it's about to the top of the handle and then I'm going to press the S key just to scale this up just for it, so it follows the curve it to extrude in the Z direction same to the bottom and scale it up by pressing the S key A, Z and then scale it up just to go to the top of the spout G and Z, I'm just moving the old ring up because it's not quite lined up. E and Z, just to take it to the top of the handle, just to scale it. E and Z, just to take it down to the bottom of the spout. And that's about right for the handle as well. And I'm just going to scale that down slightly just to give it that shape. And then E and Z, take it down quite a ways, and just scale it in, E and Z, scale, and just to finish it off, E and Z, just to do it slightly down. I'm now going to actually hold my mouse wheel down, and I'm looking now at the bottom edge, so E, then press S to scale, just to give us our base, E and Z, just to move it up slightly, E and S, just to scale it down to a point. And if we actually select our edge again, pressing the Alt key, F will fill. So we've now got the shape of our teapot, but we haven't got a spout and we haven't got an handle. What we'll work on first is the handle, just to help us uh, get some orientation. What I'm going to do is actually press the 3 key. As you can see, we're now looking from the side, but we don't know which side. So, I'm just going to add a couple of objects just to actually give us a bit of perspective, just so we can actually see things. So, this is just a trick some people use. Add, I'm just going to add a cone, and G, and X. Just by adding the cone, means you know which side you're on. As you can see, the cone's in front of there. So, we need the other side. So, Shift, I'm oh, sorry, Control and 3 means now we're looking from handles, the handle side so this here is the handle top oops sorry go on face select that's the top point and that's the bottom point of the handle so what we'll do is we're going to subdivide this by pressing ctrl on R there so we're going to make a thinner handle ctrl R there and to be honest, so I'll just give a quick lesson on that. Control and R will split the edge. Left click twice will fix it. As you can see, we've now got our two little squares up here and two little squares up down here. Right. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to select this. Select the uh, cylinder, uh, not cylinder, the cone and X to delete this pieces. Right. the way I did that is I selected the cone by pressing the L key just to actually select that part um, that particular object right so let's just select that face select that face oops select that face select that face and select these two faces and we're going to press the X key X and then delete faces by selecting faces. What we've got now is we've got the hole in our handle. As you can see, there's our handle. And I'm just going to add a bit of geometry by loop cutting this twice, like so. And at the base, I'm going to do the same there. Control R by putting a loop cut in there. The reason I've done this is I want to make this more into a circular shape and I'm going to do that quite easily by selecting this edge here and this edge, sorry, that edge there and that edge there and then I'm going to scale S in the Y direction like so just to make that kind of shape and same on the bottom select that edge there, hold the shift down and select the oops, select the other edge and scale in the y direction along the green line just to get our 
circular shape for our handle. Now what I'm going to do is we'll press the shift key down then the alt key down and select that edge and select this edge and what's that done is actually it's selected both those edges in fact I only want to actually do the top edge so I'm just going to do the top edge look from the side by pressing the one key and E to extrude and then what I'm going to do is scale in the X direction by zero all that does is flatten all these edges out and as you can see now it's a flat edge and now a bit of extrusion E to extrude let's take it there we're only going to do this roughly R uh, to change it round because when we add the subdivision modifier E that'll do all the bending for us so rotate E and rotate and finally what we're going to do is we're going to bridge between these two sets of rings so select that first ring by pressing alt and left click select the second ring by pressing the other line there and as you can see we've got both these rings now selected and if we right click over the top of them we can bridge edge loops and that will join it and as you can see our handle goes around through our teapot so if our tea go in the top of the handle it would run out the bottom like it does in a real teapot now we've now got our teapot handle done and what we need to do now is of course do the spout so let's just select our spout area all right for our spout three we need a bit more geometry so I'm just going to control and R make a loop cut there like we did it with the handle control R there and right click will we'll fix it so we'll double left click so select this edge here here and all these edges here by holding down the shift key if you want you can use control key which goes from area to area but I'm just going to press the X key and delete the faces so now we've got our spout area so as before we're going to make this a bit more circular so I'm just going to add a few more loop cuts into here just to make our shape and let's have a look how will I do this this time yes yeah, so I'm going to select that face there that face there and that face there and I'm going to use proportional editing this time and what I've done is hit this little bullseye up there and E to X in fact now I won't use that because that makes it more complicated the tutorial so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the corner edges and I'm going to shape this manually so so S to scale in the Y direction and I'm just going to make it that kind of shape and just grab these two and scale it in the Y direction just to draw them in a little bit but S and Y just a little bit more and same for these last two S and Y just to make it a little round shape and I'll grab that one in the middle there and that one in the middle there X and Y and just and for some reason we've got double geometry there and I've got no idea why that geometry is, geometry is there so X and vertices I'm just going to get rid of it X and vertices let's have a look why that's there and I'm just going to extrude in the Y direction like so sometimes you get extra geometry and sometimes you don't know where it comes from and I must have accidentally hit the wrong key and created that one so 
now we've got that looking from the front i'm going to extrude this out like we did before scale in the x direction by zero just to flatten it off and g and r to rotate s to scale g e r s to scale e Uh, rotate and I'm just going to scale this in the X direction like so and just move it up to the point of there and as you can see we've now got our rough spout and I'm just going to add a subdivision modifier to this just to actually see what it looked like so the way I did that is you hit the spanner or wrench add a modifier subdivision surface and I'm just going to take that up to 2 and right click and smooth the shape out so yeah alright there's a little bend there and we're missing that geometry so what I'm going to do is add it and then move it just to actually create that little curve there because I think that's quite needed on the teapot just to give it the shape that we want so G and X just to move it and I'm just gonna select this edge here and G and X anything you create you can actually alter control and R G and X and yeah that's it I've got the shape I wanted right. and it's up to you how circular you make things or how square you make things spending more time on the shape of this will change what, how it looks but that's more or less the actual teapot done or that part of it anything I'd like to do is actually sharpen this edge up here so I'm just going to add a control and R and put a loop cut quite close to there and I'm just going to sharpen the handle up. Control and R. And just fetch it that bit closer. Control and R. Just to sharpen the edges. So back out of edit mode. And as you can see, we've now got our handle, our teapot. And all we're going to need to do now is work on the lid. So let's select another circle. So add a mesh. And the mesh I'll add is at the circle. G and Z and scale it up E and Z E and Z doesn't work in that because you've got to be in edit mode for that to work so that's the tab key E and Z and scale it down E and Z I'm just following that curve and just scale it down reference images are really useful to use and if you actually get a blueprint from one of the blueprint sites and there's many free ones on the web E and Z you can actually get a say a blueprint of a car of or a plane or a spaceship if you want and you just scale and you just follow the lines on the blueprint just like you're doing on this actual image E and Z and you're just following that line there as you can see I'm following that line the way I'm doing that is actually holding me middle mouse button down and the shift which enables me to actually move closer just a point one point for you if you actually get lost in your image and say you've got something selected like that line over there but you somewhere over here if you hit the full stop key that will recenter you on the area that you've got selected right so I'm just going to E and Z just to roughly follow this like I said E and Z scale and E and Z and scale and then F to fill 
with the lid selected smooth shade as you can see we've now got our teapot the lid I think is too small for the pot so if you hit the 7 key and look from the top as you can see it is so I'm just going to S to scale so it's the right size and then G and Z to move the old thing down onto the teapot and voila hide our image hide our image add in a mesh and the mesh we'll add in is a plane this can be the thing the GZ thing oops the teapot sits on and then go into render mode as you can see we've got the light here I'm just going to move that over here shift to D just to duplicate it and G just to move the light there And you can end up with some really weird effects in fact my camera's still close so i'm just going to grab my camera g just to move it over there and then you start building up your scene g and z i'm just moving the camera up to the top and as you can see that light there's a bit bright uh, i'm just gonna go into the light select the light even let me select the light select the light hit the little bulb down here and you can reduce its strength to say 200 so you're making your scene or making a weird little teapot and all you need to do now is just add in your reflectiveness on your teapot so just let's just add in a quick white material make it a bit more shiny Possibly adding an HDR I. I get mine from HDR Haven. Um, this is a free site, and the link is on my website, um, on my YouTube channel, even. So let's just go into environmental texture. And it turns the screen purple, and I'm just going to open up an HDR from HDR Haven. Uh, let's have a look which one should I do. I've got a cave wand and. All sorts of things, but let's have a look. Uh, let's have a look at that cavely one. See what that looks like. Yep. And it's just add, added some reflections to it. I'm just going to create an object on my floor, change its colour, brownie colour, grab that edge and that edge, E and Z. And I've quickly made myself a little studio and then control and bevel B um, and just I prefer the, doing this with your bevel because it gives me more control but I'll just smoke shade that I'll maybe send a little studio area just to actually look at my teapot that's the Utah teapot more or less done and how shiny you want your teapot if you've got an eye gloss teapot what you can do is change the metallic straight up to the top and take the roughness down to zero and make it totally reflective you can see it's reflecting everything now oh, the lid's got i've got the same material so i'll just quickly add the same material onto the lid is it yeah. quickly add the same material onto the lid or if I added the floor in there I'm not so sure and that's the lid material now let's get the floor back on the floor right. okay so we've now created our teapot a very shiny teapot as you can see it's quite good and here's one I've done early, earlier. So go and open. And then all you need to do is mess about the, with the lighting. Here's one I've done recently. Open. Don't save this because I don't wish to. And teapot. All I've done here is added quite a bit of lighting and things just to actually make it look 
the way I want it to and then press F12 and this will render it the only other thing I did with this is added a little bit of thickness to it and I did that by adding a thickness modifier and as you can see I've left the modifiers actually um, attached to this and I've had a thickness modifier and that's um, found under there add modifier and it's the solidify modifier that you see there hope you enjoyed this tutorial please subscribe if you like this tutorial and if you're new to my channel please subscribe thank you for watching blender cc The only things I didn't show you in the scene was that I've also got ambient occlusion on here, bloom, screen place refractions and motion blur. And thank you for watching right to the end. Because there's always a little bonus feature at the end and just makes your pictures look better. Also this material, if we go into this material, there's a screen place space refractions have been added. This just gives a bit more depth to things so thank you and that's that's it from me and thank you for watching my tutorial bye for now